सो हे गाइज दिस इज दिपेश एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द ओवरऑल वर्क फ्लो ऑफ ए मशीन लर्निंग प्रोजेक्ट और राइट सो या लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड दिस विल बी अ वेरी क्विक वीडियो एंड अगेन आई एम वॉर्निंग यू डैट यू डू नॉट नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दिस राइट नाउ ओके आई एम जस्ट गिविंग यू हाई लेवल ओवर व्यू ऑफ ऑल द थिंग्स और राइट Uh, I'm not expecting you to understand everything uh, just now, but it will be our crystal clear once we uh, uh, get to the coding part. All right. So when uh, uh, somewhere around fourth or fifth video, we will be creating our uh, own. Uh, we will be coding our own machine learning algorithm uh, to solve any uh, any one particular problem. All right. In that particular uh, video, I'll be going through uh, all the steps again. All right. So don't worry. Just get a, a high level o- overview of all these things. All right. Okay, so, so the uh, no, so the no matter what machine learning or deep learning project you are doing, you will always follow four steps. All right, the first step would be data acquisition, okay, or data collection. The second step would be data cleaning and data analysis. This is also called as exploratory data analysis. All right, uh, the third step is training the model, and the fourth step is evaluating the model. now the first step is not that hard you know like it's very obvious just from the name uh, data collection you have some data uh, in some other database uh, and then you just uh, download the data or get the uh, data as a csv file or something the uh, so it's not that hard data acquisition data collection means collecting your data all right so for example you may be having some app or some uh, website you know and you may be having an rdbms or uh, mysql database in the back end so all you have to do is just download that data and get that data on your local machine so that you can we can you uh, do some processing on that data and use that data for training all, all right so the first step is not that hard data collection the second step the second step is called as data cleaning and ana- data analysis all right now keep this in mind then no matter what you are doing data is very important the the uh, since like the overall performance of your uh, machine learning algorithm basically depends upon uh, uh, the purity and the quality of your data so this second step that is data cleaning and data analysis takes up around like 70 to 80% of uh, the overall time of the entire machine learning project okay now uh, uh, the third step is basically training your model all right now in uh, in training your model we we basically we we use the data uh, that we have cleaned and pro- processed uh, we use that data from the from our second step and we you and we train our model all right so we use the data to train our model and learn the parameters all right and in the fourth step basically we evaluate our model by evaluating our model we mean uh, we found find the a- total accuracy of our overall model okay so uh, so we find how a model is basically uh, performing in a, in a real world case or you know or on a testing uh, data set now don't worry i will be explaining each and every uh, step in detail all right so yeah so now be- before we move on now l- let me let me uh, t- uh, tell you about some common terminologies okay so now uh, it may be very obvious since uh, uh, since our first video about some some of these terminologies but let me explain them again the first uh, terminology is model by model we always mean uh, like there is no particular like uh, uh, meaning uh, to this word model but whenever we, we use model in the context of machine learning and deep learning we mean our machine learning algorithm all right now there may be other meanings but uh, as far as i have seen by model everyone uh, means the machine learning algorithm okay so this is one terminology the second terminology is uh, 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 the second terminology is uh, features dimensions in, and independent variables all right now don't worry if you don't understand you will, it will be all clear when we actually code everything all right now all these three words like the features the dimension and the independent variable all these three words mean they just uh, have one similar meaning in the context of machine learning and that is a single column you know on my screen you may be seeing there are like there are four columns right now all right so each of this column you know the each of this column uh, uh, here 
each of this column like the age experience work salary each of these columns we, we can call them as features all right features or independent variables or you know now independent variable uh, now there is a difference between independent variable and dependent variable all right now independent variables are variables which we actually use uh, uh, yeah are our input all right and dependent variable are our uh, output okay so for example uh, let's say you want to predict the salary of a person given their age experience and job data all right now age experience and job will, will be our independent variables all right and uh, salary will be our dependent variable since salary depends upon age experience and job all right so keep this thing in mind whenever we mean feature dimension or independent variable we mean the in uh, we mean uh, this uh, say we mean a single column all right and whenever we mean a dependent variable which means the value the the column value that we want to actually predict all right so yeah and the third one is optimize which is again very obvious but uh, 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 it is very important that i tell you this uh, now uh, uh, optimize or optimization or, or these two words are very frequently used in uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning community all right so whenever someone says uh, that they want to optimize something or uh, uh, it is an optimization problem it basically means that they have to make something better now in the context of machine learning and deep learning when we say we want to optimize our model we mean that we want to make our model more better we we, we need to increase the uh, the performance of our model so that's particular one one uh, uh, terminology all right uh, now let me explain uh, the steps again all right the overall uh, uh, workflow of a machine learning project again now the first step i think it's very obvious first is data collection the second step is uh, data cleaning and data analysis now again as i said earlier it takes up a lot of chunk uh, like most of the time in a machine learning project all right now some of the steps that we take uh, uh, in uh, 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 in data cleaning and data analysis are uh, are written below all right so now uh, one thing that i should tell you is like this uh, there is an entire field for data analysis so it's uh, uh, so there is no single playbook or there is no single method that you will uh, ever like you will find whenever you are doing a data cleaning or data analysis all right it basically it depends upon your problem all right like uh, uh, the main goal of data cleaning and data analysis is to clean your data and bring it in a format which is suitable to train our model all right so there are a lot of uh, like steps that you need to follow uh, when you're building uh, when you're doing data analysis and data cleaning depending upon the format your data is currently all right uh, but don't worry as you create more and more uh, machine learning models and as we move forward uh, uh, we will cover most of them uh, most of the methods you know so you don't have to worry uh, about anything but uh, i have uh, uh, but i have returned some of the steps that you will you you will you will need to always follow when performing data cleaning and data analysis all right some of the steps include uh, uh, first finding continuous and categorical variables uh, or converting categorical variables to numerical variables finding collinearity among variables and uh, handling missing values or null values all right so uh, these three these four uh, steps are uh, uh, very universal you will always follow these steps uh, 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 during data clean all right now there are again like there are a lot of things that you you have to do in data cleaning but don't worry about them just uh, uh you at the as a beginner just keep this in mind that you have to follow these four steps all right also don't worry if you do not understand what uh continuous variables or categorical variables or uh, what collinearity means as we move forward i will explain everything uh, uh to you all right so uh yeah now again variables all right these are uh these are the these are very important uh terminologies or things that you must know before we begin uh, before we start creating our models all right now some of you who have studied uh, uh, who have studied uh, mathematics you know they, you you may be uh, already be aware of the these things but uh, some of you who haven't studied mathematics in your college or something 
don't worry i'm explaining everything that you need to get started with machine learning or creating your machine learning algorithm all right so the first thing is variables all right now as i told you that whenever we whenever we say feature dimension or independent variable we mean a single column all right a single column and a single column basically holds can hold different kinds of data now as you can see in front of me we have four columns now the the data that the age column uh, holds is in numerical format and the data that the experience column holds is also in a numerical format all right but the major difference is the type of value they are holding you know uh, the uh, basically variables can be divided into three types all right like in machine learning when you are dealing with structured data you know in in our last uh, uh, lecture we talked uh, what is structured data now structured data is data which is already in a tabular format all right so whenever you will be dealing with structured data you 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 have basically three kinds of variables all right first is discrete variable uh the second is continuous variable and the third is categ categorical variables all right now discrete variables are variables which are very discrete okay now uh, 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 something like 10 or 20 or 25 you know these variables are very discrete now the uh, the other type is uh, continuous variables now continuous variables are basically uh, variables which are not discrete so for example uh, uh 24.5 or 1.2 you know 5.6 these are all these kinds of variables are called as uh, continuous variables uh where discrete variables they are very discrete they don't have uh, like uh like 2.45 will not be called as a discrete 2.45 will will be a continuous variable all right so basically uh, discrete way in simple or discrete variables are very variables which uh, values which do not uh, have any decimal points all right and continuous variables are variables which have uh, uh, decimal points all right so it's pretty simple uh, there is nothing hard here and the third type is categorical variables all right now categorical variables is a bit hard all right uh, the third column which is the job column here now this is a categorical variable because it it doesn't contain any numerical uh, it it doesn't contain data in num numerical format all right it contains uh, 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 categories in in a in a string format so uh, so the first employee is a software engineer second employee is a data scientist third employee is a machine learning engineer so these are basically categories so categorical variables mean that they divide the data into categories all right so for example uh, uh, a simple example would be animals you know animals have different categories for example an, an a dog is an animal a cat is an animal you know a donkey is an animal you know so categorical variables means uh, uh, data which is in a for, in a categorical format all right so here and and most of the time categorical variables will not be in a numerical format all right so keep this in mind uh categorical variables will never be in in a uh, numerical format so uh, during data processing uh, during data processing or data cleaning which is our second step you have to convert categorical variables into numerical format okay so as we know like machines cannot understand uh, 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 strings you know machine cannot understand text text data machines only understand numbers so uh, and this categorical uh, variables they they are most of the time in in a category in a uh, textual format so we have to convert them in a numerical format uh, now again there are many ways we can do this and then in the next video i i will be telling you uh, how we can convert the categorical variables into numerical format all right so don't worry about it in next video uh, we will be uh, coding everything uh, Uh, on our own and i will show you how we can basically use convert categorical variables into numerical format using uh, uh, python's sklearn uh, library all right so the next would be video will be about that now again i think uh, it should be very clear the variables are uh, of three types discrete continuous and categoricals all right 
these three are basically the most common uh, type of variables that you will face in in your day to day machine learning problems now again like uh, uh, the next topic is data splitting all right now you know now once we have our data you know once we collect our data uh, during the data acquisition step what we do is we uh, clean the data and uh, we uh, analyze the data uh, for uh, for our for, for our machine learning model all right now once this data is cleaned you know once the data has once all the missing values has been removed once the categorical variables has been converted into numerical format uh, once the data cleaning is done what we do is we split the data all right let me write this here we split the data split the data into train and test set all right so basically what we do is well, let's say we have thousand uh, uh, data on thousand credit card users so what we do is we we split some portion of uh, the data you know to, for training our model and we sp take some part of the data uh, uh, for for evaluating our model all right now uh, training our data uh, now the most common ratio that we follow is 70 30% so we split the 70% of our data and we uh, uh, and we use 70% of uh, our total data for training our model and we use 30% of our data to evaluate our model all right so uh, once the data cleaning is done what we do is we split split our data into train set and test set all right so for example we have three examples here all right so what uh, in in our table we have three examples so what we can do is we can use the we can use two examples two uh, uh, rows for training our data and we can use the third example for testing our data all right now this is a very simple example uh, if, uh, in real world cases we'll have thousands of uh, rows all right so uh, we there are again many tools that we can use uh, uh, to split our data the most common uh, library that we use is sklearn's uh, train test split uh, method function you know so it's very easy to split our data so don't worry about it uh, we will be doing this practically in you know a fourth or fifth video so again like once the data is clean we train our data we split our data into train set and test set then we use the training set to train our model and in the fourth step which is also the final step what we do is we use our we use the testing uh, set and we evaluate our model you know okay so we evaluate our model and we find the accuracy of our model so that was the fourth step now once the evaluation of our model is done we can easily uh, 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 we can uh, deploy our, we can easily now deploy our model okay we can deploy it in our in any we can use our model in any uh, application website or something or we can even uh, uh, simply uh, create a rest api for our model okay all right now again one important thing uh, uh, that i should tell you is training our model okay now training our model basically there are two ways you can train our model okay now let me write this here training our model now there are basically two methods that we uh, we can use to train our model the first method is called as uh, offline training okay offline training and the second method is called as online training all right now in offline training what we do is we have our data we have we have our data here okay this is let's say our data and we have our model here okay we have a we have our data and we have our model here so what we do is we basically we basically train our we use our data to train the model we use data and then 
we train our model and then once the training is done what we do is we deploy our model all right what we do is we deploy our model okay now th this is th this is what we call as offline learning now offline learning is very simple we have our data all right we collected our data then we uh, did some data processing and then we trained our machine learning model all right now once the training training is complete we directly deploy we can directly deploy this uh, model okay now the, when we deploy this model there are two things uh, that you should consider that two things some things that uh, uh, that you you should know that in offline learning offline training uh, the model is not training in real time okay in real time so basically what happened here is once we train our model uh, and we deploy it we cannot basically we cannot improve our model we cannot uh, train our model again you know now in order to train our model again what we have to do is we have to collect the data again we have to create a new model and we need to train the train a new model again all right so in offline learning in order to uh, let's say we, we want to improve our model more you know let's say we are getting more and more data uh, about our application now in order to where, where in in offline learning we use our data and we train our model once and when we and then we directly deploy it but if we want to improve our model further on new data what we have to do is we have to basically uh, create a new model and train it again on our new data and then again deploy it you know so this is what offline training is now this is suitable when you are when you don't have much data uh, uh, coming on your coming your way you know let's say you you have some website and you don't get much data about your users in that particular case this kind of uh, training is uh, 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 very suitable but what if you're getting uh, uh, what if you want to create a machine learning system that gets better and better as new data comes in you know let's say you're collecting uh, like let's say you're collecting data uh, every uh, every uh, 10 seconds you know now in that case you, it would be a very uh, uh, it would be very efficient or it would be very good if the machine learning system you know the machine learning model would be able to learn uh, uh, in real time from the coming data you know so for example let's say the, you you ha let's say you have some news recommendation uh, model you know a model which recommends news you know now in this case we want our model to uh, uh, recommend the latest uh, news to the users now in this case we cannot use offline training you know we want the model to learn as uh, learn uh, about the latest news or the latest data and then recommend the latest news to the users now in this in this particular case we we what we want to do is we want uh, to train our model as frequently as possible you know so now this is where offline training comes in all right then offline training what we do is we rather than training our model once and deploying it what we do is we train our model every uh, after every uh, particular interval you know so it could be the interval could be like every minute or every two minutes you know as the data new data is coming in we train our model and the model gets better and better you know now this is what we call offline training whereas in off uh, this is what we call online training whereas in offline training what we do is we have we train our model once and then we deploy it directly now again we if we have to uh, may, uh, increase the performance or train our model on new data we have to create a new model and train it again all right so this is what you call offline training now in most of the cases okay note here let me write a note most of the cases you will use offline training okay in most of the cases you will use offline training because 
not a lot of people want to do some crazy or some complex uh, uh, things with their machine learning uh, algorithms you know they are very rarely you will uh, uh, use online training uh, most of the time you you will only use offline training okay so don't uh, also don't worry if you do do not understand this yet okay this the, the it's not easy to understand this uh, at the uh, in the first try but uh, the only uh, like the only time that you will understand everything that i have told you yet is when you will start creating your own machine learning uh, models okay uh, and we'll start we'll create our first machine learning model in 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 a fourth video or a fifth video all right so don't worry about it uh, uh, by the end of this course it would be crystal clear to you now the next video would be uh, the next video would be about data cleaning and converting categorical variables into numerical variables all right so we would be uh, 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 writing our first python code for data cleaning all right uh in next video i will go more in depth uh, about each of these steps and also we'll co we'll see how we can convert uh, categorical variables into numerical uh, format all right so yeah that was it and uh, i hope you understand you get uh, at least uh, some part of what i, I explained right now uh, if you haven't yet uh, understand uh, what i have said don't worry about it uh, after a few videos you will get everything that i say all right if if don't just watch uh, uh, this video uh, some more time all right and it will all be crystal clear okay uh, see you in the next video